9,314 on hand at Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both ball clubs. For North Carolina, under Dean Smith, Jerry Stackhouse, Dante Calabria, Rasheed Wallace, Jeff McGinnis, and Donald Williams. It's going to be interesting, Mike, to see who they play on Stackhouse. Will it be Cherokee Parks? I think it will be. And if it is, I think Carolina will attack Parks. Pete Gaudet, the interim coach for Duke with Mike Krzyzewski, Ill, Cherokee Parks, Ricky Price, Eric Meek, Jeff Cable, and Trajan Langdon. Cherokee Parks has had a big year despite the team really struggling. He's been solid as a scorer and as a defender. The Cameron Crazies are up the first time Duke has been out of the national polls to play North Carolina in 11 years. Like five times in the last decade, Duke is the number one in the nation. North Carolina controls the ball, and McGinnis with the basketball, second in the ACC, six assists a ball game. Parks is playing Stockhouse. Back door to Williams, and he just ran away from the defense. Trajan Langdon left him 10 feet away. Lack of communication. Nobody guarded him. Williams got an easy deuce. And that's been one of the problems for Duke. People have shot very well against them because their defense is not what it used to be. And I really think that's a problem with young players making the transition to college. Langdon got inside, dumps it back out. Cherokee Parks, he has great range on his shot. He can really stroke the jump shot. That's why he'll be an excellent power forward at the NBA level. He can step out and he can really tickle the twine. Duke in a very aggressive man-to-man. -man. I would attack right now Parks. I'd get the ball to Stackhouse and let him attack Parks. Nearly the steal. Capel got a hand on it. Like, I really think it's important, even though they're at home, they got to get a big lead. This crowd wants it badly. I mean, they're excited. They really know they need this psychologically. Their lack of confidence has been apparent during this 0-7 ACC stretch. Especially late in games. They don't believe, as you said earlier, that they could win down the stretch. Well, they blew a 40-19 lead against Virginia. That'll do it to you. I did that game. Capel with only two on the shot clock score. Where's the defense? It's like Madden. It is isn't there. It's unbelievable. Two easy layups. Excuse me, that may I call him Cable. It's McGinnis. Opposite fives. This is Capel. McGinnis is such a tough defensive player as well. He really plays the ball exceptionally well. And the North Carolina guards have really improved since the start of the season. Their shooting has been much better. Parks. Cleared by Wallace. Big time rebounder. North Carolina runs that sideline transition game. Love to shoot the three. Second in the nation at 44% from three-point range. Stackhouse trying to take him one-on-one -on -one and blows right by Cherokee Parks. I don't think Cherokee can handle him because of quickness. I think he's too quick with his first step. 6-2, Carolina. McGinnis on Capel. McGinnis, a tremendous defensive player. Ricky Price had it stripped. Knocked away by Calabria. Picked up by McGinnis. Stackhouse out in transition. Oh, nice ball reversal. Donald Williams. That's the way you Donald swing the ball. Williams. You make the extra pass. You reverse it. Donald Williams made a big shot live when he beat Wake Forest late in that game. And Donald Williams has his shooting touch back, hitting more than 40% of his threes. It's 9-2, Carolina. Not the way that Dukies wanted to start this baby. No, oh, they needed a 9-2 lead. Exactly. Price has to throw it away, tipped by North Carolina. Peter 16 Gordette. on the shot clock. Coach Gordet taking over for Mike Krzyzewski. has been an assistant here for 12 years. Capel fouled on the way in by McGinnis. That'll be one on McGinnis. Your heart's got to go out to a guy like Peter Goodhead. He wakes all his life. He gets an opportunity here. What a tough pressure cooker. And they really missed that kid, Grant Hill. I'll tell you something. We talk about Grant Hill. He made everybody else better. His presence on the court. Parks can't hand the in, handle the inbounds pass and has to tip it out of bounds. The turnover gives it back to North Carolina. Well, certain players you just can't replace, and Grant Hill is one of them. Look at this right now. Parks is playing off Stackhouse. He's going to make him shoot the perimeter shot. Wallace guarded by Meek. 
West Carolina really inverts their players, brings their big people out. Stackhouse got caught up in the air and ends up traveling. Good defense by Cherokee Parks that time. And Stackhouse may have been hit in the face. That's the one situation that could be a nightmare for North Carolina. They cannot afford to lose one of their starters. You saw what happened when they played without Calabria. There's the contact on Stackhouse. They played without Calabria against NC State. That was their only loss. Number 45, Serge Swicker. And Stackhouse is going to get a rest, and Serge Swicker is going to check into the ball game for the first time. Hey, Stackhouse, little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Well, there's the reach oh, yeah. right there. I believe it was... Was it Langdon that I reached think it or it was. Polk in the eye. Capel has played well the last couple of games, but has his pocket picked here. Five on two break. Williams, another three. It's 12-2. What a big time scorer. He had that big, big series when they won the national championship. They get a T.O. baby, and the Carolina fans go bananas. They're going wild down at the Dean Smith Center, too. They got a bunch down here, Mike. 12-2, Tar Heels. We'd like to welcome back our ESPN2 viewers and our ESPN viewers who join us now. It's 12-2 North Carolina. Let's check in with our host of great college rivalry series, John Neighbor. John? Thanks a lot, Mike. Sure, the guns are blazing for the Tar Heels, but you know, outside of their basketball program, they're also pretty proud of the graduates that hail from that university. Let's take a look at just a short list, if you will. Andy Griffith, Mayberry RFD fame. He's one from class of 49. Senator Sam Irvin presided over the Watergate hearings out of class of 17. Nancy Hogshead, a Duke graduate, gold medalist in 84, and the first woman elected to the Duke Athletic Hall of Fame. She also, I happen to know, is a very big Duke basketball fan. Back to you, Mike. All right, John, this is a crucial point in the game for Duke. I think they burned a timeout. They need to get a good play off this, out of, off this timeout. Dean Smith goes to a change defensively to the 2-3. Hey, Carolina's 5-5. Five for five. They haven't missed yet, Mike. They're on fire. What an outstanding starting five. And they play so well together. They're very selfish. They play as a unit. Langdon for three. Won't go. Langdon had a big, big spurt against Maryland. They took the... They took the Terps down to the buzzer. It was a two-point game. Maryland pulled it out. Had a chance to win at the end if it hadn't been for the block from Joe Smith. Wallace leaning in against Meek. They still haven't missed. It's 14-2. And they're two for two from three-point range as well. They hurt you so many places on the floor. They have so many weapons. Five guys scored in double figures. Meek. Nice pass by Parks. Yes, good high-low entry. Got it to Parks up on top. Fake the jump shot, dumped it down. And Meek with that strong move on the interior. I know it's really early, but oh! Duke needs some defense, and that wasn't it. They ran a little back screen. They throw the diagonal pass. What execution North Carolina is getting. They're perfect right now. Their offensive efficiency is unbelievable. Well, perfect is unbelievable. They're like 7 for 7, right? It's incredible. Seven for seven. Lean in by Langdon. Nice shot for the freshman from Anchorage, Alaska. 16-6. Eight for eight. Hey, they're on a road. Will somebody tell them they're on a road? They're not supposed to be familiar with this place. Donald Williams has ten points. Meek. His own rebound, and he's pushed. I'll tell you one thing about Eric Neek. You talk about heart. You talk about tenacity. He plays so hard. But what a special environment. This is the number one environment in all the college basketball. For those of us watching on ESPN, we'll return you to our studio. That foul was on Rashid Wallace, his first non-shooting foul. Wojciechowski checks in for the first time. Good ball handler, point guard, distributor. He sets the table. The joke is that Mike Krzyzewski wanted to sign him so he'd have somebody else whose name is hard to pronounce. Or he can't spell. I name a fan out there. I think you said it wrong. I dare you to be able to spell Krzyzewski and Wojciechowski. Uh oh Oh, they're awesome tonight, baby, with a capital A. Yes, the mighty blue. The heels are on fire. Somebody call up the fire chief. Put out the fire. North Carolina has not missed a shot. Cherokee Parks got the bucket and the foul on Wallace. Cherokee, you talk about 
got somebody that has to be frustrated, Mike. It's his senior year. He steps up into the number one option. Grand Hill moves on, and here they are, 0-7. But they're not 0-7 because of this guy. Look at him fighting. Look at him scrapping. Look at him clawing. But he puts it on the glass. And immediately, Dean Smith gets Wallace back to the bench with two personals. And Parks will try to complete the three-point play and does. Now they really got to attack inside. Serge Swicker, great effort, but certainly doesn't have quality experience. When the other team is 10 for 10, it says something about your defense, doesn't it? Or it says something about the other team's offense. Well, oh, maybe both. Combination. Calabria. Uh-oh, somebody missed. And the guy that missed is leading the nation in three-point shooting. Calabria hitting an incredible 60% from three-point range. Do you think they missed him a little bit against North Carolina State? Nine for ten, four for eight. Take a look at these percentages. You don't have to be a mathematical genius. I'm a dummy, Mike, and I know that's 90% and 50%. Last foul was on Wojciechowski trying to get the steal. Capel against Williams now in the man to man. Here's another three. Barry Bites Stackhouse. Stackhouse has really improved his range. One of the premier players in all of America. Averaging 20 points a game. And only four players since 78 have averaged 20 a game for Dean Smith. And I know one for sure. Langdon with a miss. The tip won't go by Meek. He still fights, but Stackhouse comes out with it. Stackhouse is like a man up on the glass. Look at the smart play by McGinnis. That's just intelligent basketball. Oh, look, look at that. Stackhouse fouled on the way in, no basket. That's an NBA triple threat move. What a great first step. Hey, look at the guys, Mike. You talked about Phil Ford, tremendous point guard. Michael the Magnificent, Brad Doherty, and Hubert Davis joined Jerry Stackhouse. Five guys under Dean Smith since 1970-71. Fouls on Cherokee Parks, pushing his first. Capel with a tough shot from the baseline. Parks with a rebound. Excuse me, McGinnis. Now you got Capel and McGinnis. You're seeing fives. Both number five. Both wear blue. And we got the worst seats in all of basketball. We're sitting tonight. I'm embarrassed to tell them when we're sitting, Mike. The furthest corner of the right up on top. It's the oddest angle I've ever seen. Oh. Collins comes in. He has not played well. Has not shot well. And throws that one away. I really think he got hurt by missing all that practice time because of the foot fracture. And that really hurt me. I'm here we are. Oh, we're way up here, people. Look at us. Hey, somebody help. Hey, they can't. Well, Mike, where are we? Look at this. Oh, you know what? I'd go the game's down there somewhere. This is the deuce, though, baby. This is the deuce. Four North Carolina. Or Duke turnovers one for Carolina. Tip won't go on the miss by Williams. And here come Duke. Duke really doesn't have a lot of athletic speed where they got guys that can run and jump. Ricky Price is one that can do that, the freshman. He hasn't really recovered from that ankle injury. Physically he has, but he hasn't really recovered in terms of his game and his skills back again. Mentally, I really believe that's set him back. The freshmen need all the time they can get, and with those uh, injuries, it doesn't help. It was the high-low series. Meek against Swicker. Swicker with the defense and the rebound. That's a good effort by Swicker. Stackhouse. Incredible! He's awesome! He's ramming, he's jamming, and he's slamming. There he goes. Ram, jam, slam! Bam! What a play, Mike. Look at this, America. A reverse one-hand slam. Wait, was that jordan -esque? Is that Yes, it was. Jordan-esque. 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 Oh, help me out, Mike. Jordan-esque. Tell you what, it takes a lot of courage to me mention okay, anybody so else's name with that of Michael Jordan, but he shows some flashes, doesn't he? He does show some flashes. 26-9, North Carolina over Duke.
We're back, 11.33 left in the half. The score, 26 to nine. The Tar Heels lead the Blue Devils. I'm here with Herb Neubauer, who's the self-proclaimed number one fan of the Blue Devils. He's gotta be pretty tough for you to watch. It's a tough night already, but we've dug ourselves a little hole and gonna we'll have to work hard to get out of it. Carolina's got a good team. Why is the North Carolina squad always the big rivalry of the year? Well, I think you got the two best schools around in college basketball, and they're so close together, and they're just both very competitive and want to be the best. Little story. You're a big collector. This is Coach K with his daughter. I'm sorry, Coach K's daughter wearing your lucky hat. What happened to the hat? The hat uh, went up in smoke in a fire I had. I lost all my Duke memorabilia in December, and since then it's been tough sledding for this Duke team, but hopefully at night we're going to come back. Well, they might need a new hat right now. We'll go back to Mike and Dick. John, what does that say when your lucky hat burns up? Uh-oh. That's bad news. I demonstrated for John today my breaststroke. He said it wasn't too cool. State of basketball. <laughs> Collins. Been the story of his year. Cherokee Parks battling inside. And that's been the story of his year. Tremendous effort. He has had a really outstanding senior campaign. Oh, you can't hang any of the losing on Parks. He's been tremendous. Knocks this one away. All they're asking to do, Mike, is go inside and get about 25 and guard Jerry Stackhouse. And not getting any more foul trouble. He has two. Collins, by the way, has hit six of 41 three-point shots. And he's such a better shooter than that. His confidence is so down. As a freshman, he hit nearly 44%. He was a great shooter. Comes from a great family. His dad, dog, mom, the great people. Nearly the steal. Good defense by Capel. Here comes the execution of Carolina. A high screen, screen and roll, reverse the basketball, one on one up on top. Stackhouse misses one. Meek with a rebound. Swicker knocked Look away. Look at Swicker! Look at Swicker! Hey, he knows John Neighbors here, so he tried to show a little diving move. As Michelangelo Dean Smith won a few games in his career. He pulled out. Creeping ever closer to Adolph Rupp. He pulled out another magical one, as you've seen so many, as you told me today, driving over here. I mean, he was like down 10 late in the game against Wake Forest. I didn't think there was out. any way, Dick. He found a way. Capel with the double team. Great pass. Collins with a pump fake and drew the foul. Nice, smart play by Collins. They did a good job attacking the half-court trap. North Carolina rotates into that trap, susceptible to a diagonal pass. Stackhouse picks up the personal, his first, the fourth on the team. You're going to not find better combinations than a Stackhouse and Wallace. You look at Corliss Williamson, certainly, and Scotty Thurman have the potential to be there. Marcus can be a pass for Lou Rowe. But these two really, really stand out big time. You know, the crowd here is really doing its part. They're hanging in there. Oh, they hung in here early in the evening. I mean, they were really fired up. They're trying to be the sixth man, but they need a little help from the team. 26-13, Carolina. I don't believe Carolina's capable of playing any better than they played in the first four minutes. I mean, they were just brilliant. Loose ball. Collins behind the back pass. Don't need that. Why do you throw a behind that. the back pass when you're trying to cut into a 13-point lead? Yeah, he doesn't need that. He knows it. There's, no one, more, there's no one more embarrassed than Collins. There's Peter Gaudet, former head coach at West Point, coached on the high school ranks. That's the fifth turnover against Duke. Great pass. Calabria lays it in. Calabria with that nice cut without the ball. Excuse that's, me, that's Landry. Was that Landry? Oh, yeah, here's, here's Landry. Landry. People excuse us from where we're sitting. We are far, far away. Price back in the ball game goes to the baseline and hits the jumper. That's the kid that has to step it up. His dad told me tonight, tell those people out there, I think my son might be a little unhappy. Forget about it. He said he loves Duke. He's one of those guys that can get his own shot. Yeah, he's an athlete. He's a runner, a jumper. He's got great quickness. North Carolina moves so well without the basketball. They have a lot of motion. Got to run a down screen for Calabria. Shot clock at seven. We'll get us a little one-on-one -on -one look at the penetration to dump it off. He does. Calabria caught in the lane. Had to force it up at the end. Wallace got it back. There's that reversal. Stackhouse for three. It's blocked. And that's great to Moving from out of Canada with the block shot. Collins to Meek. Block, knocked out of bounds.
Hawkins out to do. Had a poor angle on that shot. Never was able to square his body and get a look at the glass. The National Hockey League. Can Great talent in this league. When you think of individual talent, what about the job Travis Best has been doing since James Forrest is out? In the two wins by Georgia Tech, Mike, he has put 55 points on the board. Then you talk about a Randolph Childress, a Tim Duncan. Talking to Billy Packard today, he absolutely loves Tim Duncan. He's only 18 years of age, and what a star he has become. You saw Joe Smith last night. Night. Remarkable. Was he unreal? He had 21 rebounds. Didn't 21 he? boards. Wow. And 29 points. Yes. He is just a remarkable player, and this league is loaded with him this year. Here's one of them, Rashid Wallace. When he gets ready to dunk the basketball, I'd get about 10 feet away. There's that 2 3 zone. What a great job Gary Williams has done to bring back his alma mater. Could happen to a nicer guy. 28 15. Capel tries to hit the three from the corner and can't. McGinnis who has played so well for Carolina. Duke's got to get this down under 10 at halftime to have any kind of mental attitude to believe they can win. North Carolina getting some good minutes out of Swinton. Just laid a nice horizontal screen. Calabria having a tough time getting rid of it. Williams with a running hook. The rebound to Greg Newton, the 6'11 sophomore. Bill playing with a lot of intensity. Capel left alone for the three. Meek, or excuse me, kept alive. The follow was Ricky Price, and it was kept alive by Parks. They're really waiting for Ricky Price to start to really step up and become what they think he can. He's got great bounce off the floor, played great against Connecticut earlier this year. 28-17, the lead's been cut to 11. Shows you how tough this conference is. Think about it. Duke is 0-7 in the ACC. Greg Newton got that last foul. That's his first. We have 7.47 to go first half. North Carolina by 11. Mike, this is the one young player as Carolina with that 11-point lead who I think has a chance to be a star. Ricky Price right here, number three. He's got the tremendous legs. He's got the great lift. He's explosive. An outstanding high school player. Some thought the best senior in high school last year in the state of California. I'd play him 35 minutes and up, but then again, I'm not coaching. I should look a little summary right here. Carolina shooting 65% after starting nine for nine. Duke has turned it over five times in this game. They try the backdoor lob to Wallace. Out of bounds to Duke. Duke did a great job defending that play. Rasheed a little upset with the call. They like it, the Dukies. And Duke has certainly played better defense in the last five, six minutes. Duke has been very active inside. Newton will take a 17-footer, won't hit it. He's under a little extra pressure, having a little problems academically, according to all the papers. His status is going up in front of a board, involving a possibility of a little problem with a, I guess it was a turn paper. Wallace, look out. And oh, oh, by Newton. Rasheed Wallace with great inside position. There's no sense trying to block that. Your arm may go in the basket with the ball. There's the lob. He holds his ground, gets inside, jams it. I see so much of Alonzo Mourning and Wallace. Wallace has eight points. He's hit all four shots from the floor. 30 to 17. But he missed the free throw. Let's with that rebound. What was the status with him again? It involved the turn paper, did it not? He was found guilty of academic dishonesty. Ooh, that wow. is being appealed. Wow, let's hope that that works out for him, but it didn't happen. Capel looking inside. Langdon. Oh, nice Marks. pass. Wait, look. Newman with the jam. He's playing hard, and Cherokee, the chief, delivers the rock to another big guy. Very unselfish play and sets Newton up for the layup. Duke has really picked up their game here. It's that defense, they got to reach down, got to have a little pride. Can't let them humiliate you on your own living room floor. Still, Carolina leads by 11. McGinnis, double team. Carolina usually attacks that double team well. They reverse the ball and get it away from the traps. Shot clock at five. McGinnis for three. 
Ricky Price missed him up the sideline. Gable missed him. Price tries to go baseline. Tough shot. Offensive foul on Price. Little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Price on the wing. Jeff Capel's the guy, as you said, has been playing a lot better lately. He's had some big days shooting the basketball. He came on strong last year in a run to the national championship before being beaten by Arkansas. Newton gets a big hand as he goes out. Meek will come back in. He gets hugged. Played really well, Newton. Great effort. This Carolina runs their fame passing game. Look down to the post, you double up there, bring it back out. And Wallace throws it away wide of McGinnis, the fourth turnover for North Carolina. So Dick, after starting in a perfect mode where they could do no wrong, right now the lead is down to 11 and Duke has the ball again. And Duke has picked it up defensively. Rasheed Wallace coming up a great high school program. Simon Graff, 2-3 zone, look for them a little trap out of this. Wing shot should be available on the wings against that 2-3. And Duke has some good outside shooters. Yeah, they really have shot the three pretty well this year. That's the one area they have done a pretty good job. Capel hasn't been able to buy one. This one's knocked away out to Carolina. Hey, how big is this game in the eyes of a lot of people? I was telling you, all the media guys are here. Larry Donald, Basketball Times, Dickie Weiss from out of the Daily News in New York, Skip Mislinski from out of Chicago, the Tribune, Mizell from out of Newsday in New York. I mean, they're all in town. This is a big one, baby. Even with Duke 0-7 in the ACC. It's still Duke in North Carolina. And nobody believes that team should be 0-7. I think people made an error. It should be 7-0. Stackhouse down the line. A lot of contact. No basket. Offense. Frank Scagliano with the call. That's two on Stackhouse. And Duke may have gotten a break on that one. We're going to look at Jerry Stackhouse. Here he is against Cherokee Barnes. Tries to beat him with the step. And there is the charge. Eric Meek with that good rotation comes over, takes the charge. Swicker comes back in as Stackhouse picks up his second. Rasheed Wallace also has two. There's Eric Meek. He rotated over, had both feet planted. Stackhouse up in the air. Cherokee Parks has 10. The lead is cut to 8. And the Cameron Frazier's are rocking and rolling. They're jumping with joy. They haven't had a whole lot to cheer about this year. Stackhouse with a miss. The rebound to Meek. Here's Wojo. There's Price. Price. Parks with a big, big rebound. Look it out. Move the ball. Set some screens. It's a screen by Parks. Wojo left alone, didn't want it. Step away from that screen. The screener becomes a dangerous player. Try to trap Price. What intensity. What electricity on that floor. You can feel it all the way up here, Mike. Cape. Oh, nice, nice look. Pass to Meek. Missed the shot. Oh, oh. Right left hand tip by Meek on the interior. But a great look by Capo. And they're dancing, baby. They're dancing. It's down to six. The Dukies are dancing. Watch this block shot right here. We're going to see the block right there by me. Now look at his buddy, the Surf Brothers from out of California. They said, go do it, baby. Cherokee and me, they hug. They came all the way from California out here to Durham, North Carolina. Duke on a tremendous run. They were down 26 to 9 at the 1140 mark. And boy, they looked dead. I'll tell you, Mike, they picked it up defensively. McGinnis, tough shot, won't go. Swicker with a follow, won't go. Carolina could miss early in the game. Uh-oh. 
Stackhouse with the rebound. He's fouled by Capel. Life in the ACC. There aren't any easy trips. No matter where you go, you better lace them up and come to play. There have been a couple of trips down when Duke had a chance for big three-pointers that could have swung the momentum even more. Well, Parks and Price, the one that Price missed wide open. Yeah. Number 22, Peter Slander, returns. They miss Mike not to take anything away. He's the one kind of coach when you think about the Giants, the Bobby Knights, the Nolan Richardsons, John Thompsons, and all the super coaches. Take a look at the numbers here with Mike and with Al. They tell you the story. You look at the points per game. But in all fairness to Peter Goodett, the competition got a little tougher playing in the ACC. Absolutely. Mike would be the first to say it. But he brings so many intangibles to the table. Dean Stackhouse Smith. missed the one and one. Carolina has had trouble with Oh, that's off. a great pass. He should have hesitated. Parks with the basket and the foul. Wojciechowski with the great bounce pass. He fed him perfectly down inside. This is the team hurting. Their fans are behind him. The cheerleaders are behind him. They're trying to get a little going here tonight. There's the bounce inside. There's the head fake. This is the kind of performance if they can pull out a W, we'll give them a spark. 12 points for Parks. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've done games from this building. <laughs> I've never heard it this loud, even when they had all the great teams. They can't get any louder than this. No. Can't get any louder. We're up high. They're rocking. They're shaking our boots. I mean, they're shaking. I hope we're safe up here. Parks' three-point play gives him 13, cuts the lead to three. Wojciechowski has been of a spark, too. Got to play a little zone right now. A little matchup zone, too. Not playing their typical man-to-man. -man. Shimon Williams and Pierce Landry, the backcourt with Williams. Got to attack them. They're inexperienced, even though Landry's been around a little while. Hasn't played a lot. Swickert nearly lost it. Shot clock at six. Tipped out of bounds. Shot clock at five. When North Carolina gets away from its five-man club, and it's starting five, Dean Smith's basketball team is a different team. They become a good team as opposed to being a great team. Absolutely. Their starting five is sensational. Plays Pierce so well Landry together. kicks it off to Shimon Williams with one on the shot clock. Over the backboard, out to Duke. Dick, you're right. The team that Dean Smith has on the field right now, there's only two guys who are going to score for it. Exactly. And right now, Duke has got to take advantage. you got to credit these kids. I mean, these Flacco's, these 1,400 SATers are going bananas. They're letting out all their frustration over the year here today. Playing against the Blue from down at Chapel Hill. Got Meek in the low post, Parks running the baseline. What a college environment. Where's that 2 3 zone? Last night it was a Madison Square Garden. Nothing like this. This is college hoops, baby. Wojciechowski with a miss. Williams with a rebound. Donald Williams, the last 10 games, has played beautifully. Not forcing shots either, taking good shots. Shimon Williams with a miss. Meek with another rebound. There's the young man who almost redshirted at the start of the year. He has seven rebounds tonight. Shimon Williams was recruited at the end by Kentucky with the fourth union. Played some solid minutes against Clemson. Ricky Price. I can see his confidence starting to come back a little now. He knows he's got talent. They haven't seen the real Ricky Price the last two weeks here. It's a one-point game. The miss by Donald Williams and Price with a reach-in foul. Hey, Mike, I can't believe it. I have to tell the truth. I was getting all my filler material ready to roll, baby. I thought it was filler time. Dick, it was 26-9. to nine. There was no way to believe that Duke, as poorly as they played, and as with all the confidence they've lacked, would make any kind of a run. And yet here they are within one point. Guts, heart, desire, sense of pride, not quitting and playing an outstanding team down the road who's given a superb effort as well. Pierce Landry has given this club some quality minutes this year. The 5A to Kappa from Greensboro. Great student. He can really stroke the ball as well. He's a product of that JV program where Roy Williams got his chance. He played yeah. 10 years. A lot of schools don't have a program where they give an assistant a talk chance to call timeouts, and Roy is now one of the giants at Kansas and coaches. Landry makes them both. The lead is back to three with a minute 15 left in the half.
I'll tell you, whatever the lead is from this moment on, if you're Peter Gaudet, you got to be proud of the way these kids battled back. Patience and poise here, but it's a skip pass. Capel for three. That was just won't go for him. That was a great pass by Parks. Right over the top of the defense, the skip pass. The zone slides if you make that pass for the guy next to you. Capel has had some good looks tonight. He's a very streaky shooter. Is that really Get good? Landry. Landry comes up short in the lane, but has the presence of mind to tip it back outside to McGinnis. The one thing happening for Dean Smith, that's a positive. He's getting some minutes on guys like Williams and Landry to rest his starters for that second half. They're playing a lot of minutes this year. North Carolina has gone the last seven minutes without a field goal. They'll play for the last shot. And can you believe it? They knocked down their first nine. You know, Mike, you think of their starters. Their starters. What has Carolina ever had five guys averaging better than 30 minutes a game? I, I can't remember. Well, you're going to go back to the year with Darity and Jimmy Black and company okay, with Michael okay. Jordan, Perkins, and Worthy. That club. Tough shot by Calabria. Cable at the buzzer and nearly made a 35-foot three-pointer. Well, they made it a game. They got a game here. We're going to have an exciting second half. The Dukies only down five. Tremendous comeback by the Blue Devils to cut it to five at halftime. Let's get down to John Neighbor. John, this is some atmosphere, isn't it? No question about it. I'm down here, and I can honestly say Dick Vitale is not loud enough because of the noise that's going on on the floor when we come back during halftime. Some more footage of other great games between these two rivalry teams. lead the Blue Devils 34 to 29. Carolina led 26 to 9. Duke has come roaring back to make a game of it. Let's take a look at the first half stats. After starting hitting their first nine shots of the game, Carolina shot 23% the rest of the way, finished at 45%. The three-point field goals have been a major difference. Three out of eight, only one of ten for Duke, and they've had some good looks. Rebounding close, turnovers close, free throws close. Everything's close. I'll tell you, Mike, I think a stat that really stands out. North Carolina is three for five on the line. Going into the season here, they have made, you ready for this? They have made 17. They're averaging making 17 a game, and they're shooting 26 a game. Right now, as we look here, the first 10 shots, 9 for 10. Unbelievable. If you can keep North Carolina off that free throw line, really make them struggle to get some good looks for the threes, you got a chance. Cherokee Parks was so tough on the interior. There's the good position, the good head fake. He gets quicker up in the year, puts it on the glass. Good low post play right there by the Chief. Turn that one into a three-point play. Fouls could make a difference because Wallace and Stackhouse for North Carolina, Parks and Newton for Duke have two fouls apiece. Parks, 13 points, four rebounds, and he seems to come up big at the big moments when they really need something. Cherokee comes through for him. He played well also against Joe Smith and company in that game against Maryland. He's been a steady performer all year. Had a bad game against Wake Forest. They did a great job shutting him down. Duke Ball to start the second half. The Blue Devils down by five. The guy that's got to step it up is Capel. If Duke's going to win tonight, Jeff Capel's got to step his game up. Langdon gets a good screen. Didn't want the shot. He's a very streaky kind of player. He scores in spurts. Meek against Wallace. Tries to dump it for Parks. A little tentative, but he got it up. Yeah, he's really so effective down in deep. Cherokee Parks with 15. It's 34-31. Parks knocks it away. Parks has become an excellent inside-outside player. He can shoot the long ranger as well. That was a two. Meek offensive rebound. He scores. They are out hustling North Carolina out of the gate here, but they are out hustling, out scrapping. They cut it to one. This is why this is the greatest rivalry in basketball. And why this is the greatest environment in basketball. There's nothing like it. There are a lot of places that imitate this place, but this place is so unique and special. Wallace with a miss. Duke with a chance to take the lead. They have never led in this game. Blow this roof off the building here. Who would have believed this? Especially the way they started.
started. North Carolina was getting layup after layup. Price, there it is. Ricky Price. I say that could be a star. Ricky Price has star all over him. It's a matter of him going out and doing what he's capable of doing. Duke has scored the first six points to take the lead. Stackhouse will draw the foul. Smart play by Stackhouse to drive inside. Dean Smith really loves the way Jerry Stackhouse creates opportunities to get to the line. He knows how to utilize his body so well. There's a look at Ricky Price right now. I love this guy. I think this diaper dandy can be a special talent and a special player. He be a total rainmaker, Jay. And the wackos go bananas here. Stackhouse averaging 20.3 points a game, number two in the ACC. He's hit one out of two free throws tonight. Got the roll on that one. North Carolina as a team continues to be last in the ACC. But they really go to that line so often that they make people pay by getting people into foul trouble. Carolina retakes the lead, 36-35. If he had more free throws than their opponents have attempted. Two free zone right now by North Carolina, Mike. With that little matchup. Helps the rest some players along the way since they play so many minutes. But they get a lot of wide open shots in that 2 three. You step into that foul line area, it's vacant right up high. Basically a three guard offense with Capel, Langdon, and Price. Parks. In and out, fight for the rebound. Jump ball situation. We are on the opposite side of the arrow. Now we're told it goes to Carolina. Larry Rose with the call. Officials doing a solid job tonight. Dudetzel, Rose, and Scagliata. Freddie Barricat does, I think, as the leader of the pack. I've said this. A lot of other conferences should emulate the way he evaluates and reviews the performances of his zebras. This conference has the best officiating basketball. They've had it for years, Dick. I think they do a superb job. As Duke playing that man-to-man -man defense, matchup Parks against Stackhouse. Left on a Williams alone too long. You can't do it. He has the shooting touchback. This club is a different team, North Carolina, when their starters are on the floor. Donald Williams has a dozen. The lead is back to three. So North Carolina with a great answer after Duke took its first lead. Carolina trying to match up out of that 2-3. Play a man in the area of the floor. Baseball player, too, signed with the San Diego Padres. Had a little trouble seeing that deuce, though, that curve. All young kids will know. There he is, hanging in the air. So highly acclaimed when he came out of Anchorage, Alaska. I'll tell you one thing, he didn't have environments like this down in Alaska. A no, competition sir. like this. How do you play baseball in Alaska? <laughs> they got a great summer league down here in baseball where all the great college players play. Langdon hits the three. We're tied at 38. We got a good one, baby. Don't leave the deuce tonight. Call your friends up. Get out there and watch the deuce. And yeah, for anybody who left when it was 26 to 9, call them back. Holding call, I believe, on Parks. North Carolina trying to be on Meek. Go take the ball, get it down inside, get that good angle for that low post entry. There he is right now. Little Wallace going out down deep. He's getting deep position. Look at me trying to fight him. He's so quick. I watched the most improved guy in college basketball as a post player yesterday, Jason Lawson out of Villanova. Donna Williams for three, top of the circle. He won't miss many of those. Donna hit that big clutch shot. He's one of the clutch shooters, along with Scotty Thurman of Arkansas, Michael Williams of Massachusetts. What? He scores in spurts, Mike. He scores in spurts. He scored 17 and a half against Maryland. Trajan Langdon. He has eight and Duke with its biggest lead. He has eight. He has six quick ones right here in the last minute. Here's a holding foul on Meek. Larry Rose with a good ball. Meek had his hands all over Rasheed Wallace. Meek did not commit a foul, or did one in the first, did not commit a foul in the first half, has two quickly here in the third team foul. He had such a tough start to his college career after an injury when he was hit by a car in high school after his senior year. Wallace jump hook. Oh, nice touch. So 
good inside. What a talent. You talk Wallace, you talk Joe Smith. I say they're number one and number two in the NBA draft. I hope they come back to school. I would love to see the NBA people not bother these kids. But with the kind of dollars in front of them, could you blame them for leaving? 41-40. Sixteen oh nine to go in the game. There's that street fight right on target. We talked about it. The scouting report says he's a streaky player. You get the points on the board quickly. He is in the zone. In the zone. Four forty. Nice wrap around oh, pass by McGinnis. Oh. He's always in the zone, Mr. Wallace. Hey, in the zone. ITC. ITC. Seven assists for Jeff McGinnis. He's coming off a career. Oh, oh, Parks. What a game we got, Mike. This is incredible, baby. This is awesome, baby, with a capital line. It's unbelievable. We should take a check for watching this. No matter how high we are, I can't believe it, Mike. This is a remarkable game. Nice cut by Stackhouse. Oh, basketball efficiency. Great move without the ball. This is beautiful stuff on both sides. It's poetry in motion. And the intensity, the electricity. Nice pass oh. to meet by Capel. What a great two-man play. Drop the bounce pass to the baseline. You feed it to the lead hand. You get drop step position. That you is get ex absolutely exceptional. 49-44. Like, hold me down. I'm so on fire. Hold me down. Parks tries to draw the foul, and then they get the blocking foul as Stackhouse drives in against Meek. My Three God. quick ones on Eric Meek. Yeah, that's big right there. They have to go to Newton now, bringing them off the bench. Mike and I, it's like a sauna. We had to take our sweaters off. We're drenched. I mean, we're absolutely drenched. It is worth it, baby. It is worth it. Meek gets a big hand, and he deserves it. There's the drive by Stackhouse. Meek uh, he was moving. Over. Yeah, he was there too late. Never was there. Didn't get to the position. He likes taking that charge. He usually does over the years. Great job taking the charge. Think about what Michael K has achieved here. Last nine years, seven final fours, two national championships. They beat that great UNLV team in the semifinals when they were undefeated in 91. Came back to the national title in 92. Stackhouse, now four out of five, 13 points. There's been a lot of pain around here for what's happened here in recent weeks. This has not been a happy time here in North, North Carolina. Stackhouse hits them both. A three-point lead, 4-2. Welcome back. Second half action. Duke leads by three. I'm standing next to Jerry Stackhouse's half-brother, Thomas Dawson. And, Tom, did you play with your brother early in high school, and did he show that kind of flair back then? Oh, yeah. Back then, you know, Jerry's always been a – I've not, never been the player that he is now. I, I, I probably could shoot a little better, but jump like him ain't no way. <laughs> is Jerry the kind of player who will stay at UNC for four years, or is he going to go pro soon? And that's something I don't know. That's a decision he'll have to, have to make for himself. What do you want him to do? It all depends. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of the game. Great rivalry here, folks. Let's take a look. All right, John, thanks. 14. I think we can just barely see the edge of the scoreboard. 14-39? Looks like 14-39. All right. You get a nosebleed up here. We're up in a catbird seat up here. But it's fun. This is fun city. This has been a tremendously well-played basketball game. Especially the second half, it's been really the best I've seen thus far this year in terms of the environment, intensity, execution, shooting, war movement. Collins for three! Hey, that's what they need. Everybody is feeling it. It becomes contagious. When one guy steps it up, everybody else steps it up. If they get Chris Collins shooting that way, they become so much more dangerous. As a freshman, he was draining Duke has done a pretty good job all year shooting a three. Not certainly as well as North Carolina. We're looking at it tonight. Four for four in the second half after one for team. Ten. Remember this, North Carolina's second in the nation shooting the threes. 44% for the year. 
Duke's biggest lead, 52-46. What a weapon, that three-point shot. You're not going to survive without him today. McGinnis tries a tough pass. Here's Langdon back the other way. Collins! Hey, Collins! Hey, Doug, you got to be happy. That's the real Chris Collins. That's the kid we know. That's the kid that was a star in high school. Who had some great moments last year. And I love his personality. That could be a tremendous turning point in Chris Collins' young career at Duke. He, he hits the open three and then comes back and shows all the confidence in the world on that drive. And he needs that mentally, psychologically as a player. He needs a lift. And there he is with that drive, lays it on a glass, very simple. His dad was absolutely sensational. The last foul was on Trajan Langdon, his second, the sixth team foul. And Wallace goes to the line, a 61% shooter. Even though Carolina's free throw numbers are still down, you can see they're getting better, especially in the second half they shoot that. Especially late in the game, Mike. They got great technique right there. You see Wallace, he's got perfect mechanics. 54-48, 13 to go. One thing that's happened here tonight, Duke has shut down the three-point shot of Dante Calabria. He's what? been extremely quiet. Leads the nation in three-point shooting. He's not quiet. He's not quiet. He's right now smoking, baby. He's smoking. He's scintillating right now. Trajan Langdon has 14, and Duke leads by nine, the biggest of the night. Wallace partially blocked by Newton, but he gets the foul. They can't let this one slip away. They allowed one to slip away from Virginia with a 40-19 lead. In fact, they were up 23 in the second half on Virginia. Dick, we were talking during the timeout. If Duke can win this game, it would give them such tremendous confidence boost. But if they play like this and end up losing to North Carolina, this could be devastating, especially coming off the game against uh, Maryland. Maryland, you lose two back-to-back -back like that. You know, you want no moral victories. You don't want a handshake tonight and say, you know what? Great effort, guys. You played with a lot of heart. You were down 17. This is your living room floor. I'll tell you something. We really have seen the character of these kids tonight. Ricky Price comes in for Langdon, who goes to the bench for a breather with 14 points. And he has been on fire in the second half. He has spotted up really well, made a great drive. Wallace makes it 57 to 50. Rashid with 16 big ones. North Carolina can get a little fatigued right here, too, in terms of it's hot in this arena. Play those starters a lot of minutes. He's got Pierce Landry on the floor right now trying to get one of the starters. And Ricky Price buries one. I just can't believe that he has not been a better player than he has been. I know he had the ankle injury, but I saw him like him against Connecticut, and you can just see the special talent he possesses. Maybe tonight is the night. Could be the coming out party. Calabria just can't get a shot. The place is right up in his face. And that's one of the great strengths of North Carolina, shooting the three. Nice drive by Stackhouse. The foul will be on Newton. That's his fourth. And Duke getting into some foul trouble inside. Four on Newton. Mink went to the bench with three. They rotate three big players. There's Stackhouse. So tough to handle him. He's got the great body control. An exceptional driver. Kansas does a great job rotating three big people. Pollard, LaFrance, Oster Tag. Pete Gaudette will sit Newton down with his fourth foul at the 12-34 mark. And Meek will come back in to play with his three. I know Mr. K got to be watching. He's got to be proud. This is Duke of old playing with intensity, feeling, and confidence. He had the three freshmen, Mike, after their loss to Maryland. He had the three freshmen at his house. And very rarely, according to people, talked about basketball. They were there watching the Super Bowl the conversation. Mike is a people guy. Stackhouse misses the second shot. He has 15 points. You can Price see the Wojciechowski. You can see even the bounce by Price. He's got so much confidence. Collins. Meek kept it alive, but the rebound snatched down by Stackhouse. He's got great hands. Calabria with a runner. That's only his second field goal tonight. And he shows that I can also go to the basket. If you're going to take away my jump shot, I'm going to drive. And he has not had a chance to shoot a three-pointer. He's the best in the country. Mike, you're right. I've been here so many times. This crowd is so explosive tonight. 
Tonight they have really stepped it up trying to support their people. You look at Dante Calabria. His dad played in Iowa years ago. Under 12 minutes to go. We'll be back to Durham in a moment. Duke over North Carolina. Remember, this game started with Carolina leading 26-9, and it looked for all the world like they would blow Duke out of their own building. Field goal shooting second half. Duke starting the second half the way Carolina started the first. 12 for 15, really on fire. Executing. Look at this right here. Look what's at stake right now. Unbelievable. They haven't lost four straight to UNC since 1984. Four straight at home since 76, 77. Oh, hey, I know that lady, Mike. I know that redhead. The lovely Lorraine Vital. Oh, wow. Spending all these years for you. We have decided to nominate her for sainthood. You got to do that, Mike. 23 years with me, living with a wacko like me on the road all the time. She has to be special. 11:51. Speaking of special, this game has been just that. And that's, and that's not overselling it either. No uh -uh. has. This has been remarkable. Shot clock at seven. Here's a holding foul away from the ball. It's going to be on Pierce Landry. North Carolina is really susceptible to being really taken when they go to that bench. They are limited in their personnel. Pat Sullivan would have been such a player for this team. Parks had the three. Good ball movement. Capel. Capel's got to step it up here. Give a little help to Langdon and Collins, who really gave him a great lift. First two for Jeff Capel, who averages 11.9. And he's averaged over 16 in ACC game. Three-pointer by Landry. Big shot for Carolina. We want to welcome our ESPN viewers. You have joined us in the middle of a superb game. 61-56 to 11 minutes to go in the game. What a gutty comeback you've missed here by the kids from Duke. A lot of character. They were down 17 early, but had no quit. Parks for three. It's an air ball. Oh, look at her. Made the basket and he's fouled. What a great hustle play. Unbelievable. Yes, they're going bananas here. The Duke fans have been sensational cheering their team on. Chris Collins has hit three huge shots coming off the bench. There's the missed shot. Here comes Collins with the left hand for the offensive rebound. Look at him now. Look at his enthusiasm, his spirit, his hugs. Don't tell these kids they're 0-7. Look at this. They're enjoying it. What an absolutely great, great night so far here. Donald Williams gets the personal, his first, only the team's third in the second half. I can't believe it, Mike. We are drenched. We are sweating. It's a sword up here in the Catbird seat. But this has been so worth it. Both clubs have really played superbly here in the second half. Collins, an 83% free throw shooter, missed the end of the three-point play. The lead is seven as we approach ten minutes. Little two-man game, Swicker and McGinnis. Tough pass by McGinnis for Zwicker to handle. Parks, get it over to Capel. He's got to get going a little bit.
play intelligent basketball, but you don't want to get tentative if you do this so much time. No, playing with confidence is what got him this far. North Carolina's got to step it up defensively. Shot clock at seven. North Carolina has not played well defensively here in the second half. Capel has to force it up. Won't go. Offensive rebound to Meek. Back it out. Play intelligently. And here is a foul on Calabria. Dick, I'll tell you one thing I wouldn't do. I would never isolate a man on McGinnis and tell him he's got to get his own shot at the end of his shot clock. McGinnis is not going to give you a shot. Exactly. McGinnis is so tough on the basketball. He's been such a solid point guard. I'll tell you, Mike, there's something special about both schools. You know, when I go down to Carolina and Franklin Street, you go to North Carolina, it's class with a capital C. You come here and do, you feel that same kind of electricity. The kids of both programs, they graduate. The coaches are first class. Everything about both schools really is solid food. One four set for Duke. Baseline jumper won't go. Parks with a rebound, maybe over the back. Cherokee Parks. I'm surprised with that call by Frank Scagliata because Duke Netzel had a good angle as the trail official on the left. Scagliata came all the way from the other side of the floor. There's the little jump shot. Ricky Price misses it. There's Parks. And there's see Duke Netzel. Now he's staring. He's looking over at Scagliata making the call. You see him right there? Yeah. He was right there. I think that's going to be his score. That looked like a pretty good rebound and on the replay. Of course, they don't have the advantage of it. That's three on the marks. And Stackhouse will go to the line. And Frank is a heck of an official. Stackhouse has hit six out of eight from the line, 15 points. Playing out of position, really, for North Carolina at the power forward spot. Six, six, a real small forward. Although he can play anywhere for me, I'll anyway. tell you. Pat Sullivan, we talked about earlier, had that back surgery. He would have been such a key player for North Carolina. Would have given him an extra quality role player. Missed the second shot. Wojciechowski, with, excuse me, Langdon with a rebound. Two factors why Duke is winning right now. One, they've been able to negate the great three-point shooting of North Carolina. And two, they haven't allowed him to get to the free throw line that off. Here's a foul on Wallace, his third. on Rasheed Wallace. That's the fifth team foul. What super big people in this league. When you think of Joe Smith and Tim Duncan, who's only 18 years of age, Wallace, three big-time players in the sophomore class. They need to throw on veterans like Cherokee Parks. Get it into Eric Meek, who may be playing the best game I've ever seen him play. Carolina throws it away, though. That's only the first turnover for Duke. Open up. That's an excellent call right there. Duke Getzel with the excellent call on the charge by Stackhouse. Dick, we have seen the Duke players drawing fouls tonight. That's one of the things they haven't been able to do all year. And that's position defense. That means they're hustling through the spot. They're moving their feet. We take a look at it right here, Mike. 7.56 left to go in the game. The lead is nine. 68-59, Duke 7.56 to go. Tomorrow, 8.30, ESPN 2's nothing but net. Number 23, Cincinnati at 5-1. Memphis at 4-1, the top two teams in the conference. Join us then on the deuce for nothing but net. And stay with us here. One of the remarkable college basketball games we've ever had the privilege to witness. Duke is outscored. North Carolina since the early start by 26 points. And we're down 26 9. What a comeback. Capel has to kick it back to Wojciechowski. Langdon has been on fire in the second half. Tough shot, foul underneath. If it's me, it's his fourth. This is where North Carolina will make a run and make this thing interesting. Look at Calabria leading the nation, three-point shooting at 60%. Tonight he's 0-for-1 with four points, and that's because of the defensive job being done by the Duke kids, not allowing them to spot up and get the open three. They made 17 threes, Carolina record against Florida State, and I believe Dante Calabria had eight of them. He hit eight of them, and that tied his school record that was set by Hubert Davis. Stackhouse, and now we're to 10 fouls, so everything from here on out is a two-shot job. Jerry's a man. Jimmy
about it. I know Phil Conrad. They got a tremendous talent down here this year named Tom Mercer. He may go to Kentucky or he may go to Tennessee. Newton comes back in. Meek goes out. Both have four fouls, but they'd rather have Newton foul out and save Meek. Yeah, you got one for an insurance policy. Yeah. That's what you're trying to do with rotating them. You want two of your big people on the floor at one time, so they rotate. One of your three out of the game. Stackhouse has 18 points. The lead is cut to seven. Capel missed the runner. Nice Parts rebound. The rebound. Good offensive rebound. That means you're playing aggressive basketball. Red low curl move. You get Capel free. Oh, he missed Parks. He had great inside position. He's got the size inside on Stackhouse. Langdon as Carolina goes for the trap, and Langdon gets around it. I'd do Parks. Didn't want the shot. I dump it to Parks inside. Langdon almost got the bounce. What a ferocious rebound of Stackhouse. Is. There's the open three. Calabria missed it. Wide open, and he's the best in the country. He looked a little bit tired there. Didn't get his legs into his shot. He's only gotten two three-point shots and missed them both. 6.36 to go in the game. I'm a little surprised that Collins isn't out there right now. He's going to rest Collins and Price and get them back, I believe, to the end. McGinn has tried to reach in and knock it away. Got to be patient. Good maximum. Maximize this possession. I go to Parks. Well, they haven't gotten it to him. Here's Capel. This will be a blocking foul inside. Trying to get a little two-man game right there, but... Parks doesn't get the ball, so Cable takes it one on one. That's four on Stackhouse. Was the contact. Cable's dad is the coach at Old Dominion. Now Landry will come in for Calabria. I just believe the rest of for a minute and get him back on the floor. Landry made a big three a little bit earlier. There's the drive by Cable. Ricky Price returns the contact. Ricky Price will come back in the ballgame for the Blue Devils. And Walt Jahaski will get a breather. Weiss really has played exceptionally well here tonight. Capel goes to the line for the first time tonight. He has five points. He's only a 56% free throw shooter. Hasn't had the kind of year that I thought he would in building up what he did last year. But I think that says something for Grant Hill. When Grant Hill was on that side, on that floor, other people got wide open shots. Yes. And there's that jersey. Look at those numbers, Hurley and Hill and Leitner. Plus, he was such a great leader, you can't replace that overnight either. Throwing Johnny Dawkins, and that's my all. Coach K5 during his era as the coach here at Duke. Two big free throws by Capel, the lead back to nine. Whistle away from the ball, it'll be a hold on Langdon. And that's a two-shot foul because we're over ten. It's very similar to what happened to Wake Forest. They're down by 10. Well, Michelangelo Dean Smith, one of the best ever to work the sideline, has a magical way, it seems, at the end of many a game. You get the feeling down by 10 with a couple of minutes to go. Dean says, well, we got him right where we want him. I've never so seen I'm, anybody have that many comebacks. He said, I want to earn my money. I want to earn the big bucks they're paying me down here at Chapel Hill. Oh, he's done that time and time again. Now, Meek will come back in for Newton, playing with four fouls. This is the first trip to the line for Williams. Williams on the line. Mark Shansky's out here today, North Carolina. Yearbook, which is outstanding. He puts out Curry Kirkpatrick, one of the great basketball writers. He works now for Newsweek is here. I mean, there's media all over this place. That's only three points for Donald Williams, who averages nearly 15 a game. Excuse me, 14 now. He started off so hot. He hit two threes right out of the game here tonight. But there's the half court trap. You got to post somebody up to the middle. The uh, steal by McGinnis. Picked his pocket. There's a nice dunk right there. Great play. Watch out. Here come the heels, baby. 24 Stackhouse. The lead is five. Watch for the trap. They're going to scramble. One and jump. Here it comes. Got and Capel picked up his dribble. You can't do that. And there's another strip right there. Langdon tied up. Oh, that's a bad. See, there's a bad call. I mean, the bad rule. Alternate possessions. They make a great defensive play, North Carolina. And the ball goes over to Duke. Couldn't agree with you more. Peter Goddard working that sideline. Wipe out that rule. Get rid of it, rules committee. That's a perfect example of penalizing a team who makes a great effort defensively. Langdon outside with Capel and Price. They have not gotten the ball to Cherokee Parks in ages. And he's 
they try to. And he's been sitting in some good post yeah. position. And he's got a smaller guy playing him. And we've talked about this before. No time to get tentative. There's too much time left. 526 to go. And you can't play scared. You've got to play basketball now at winning time. You've got to make the big shot. You've got to utilize each possession intelligently. Collins is in for Langdon. Nice head fake by Capel. Wide open and buried it. That's a high percentage shot. A little baseline jump shot by Capel. Capel has nine all in this second half. Experienced player has got to step it up now. Pointer switch, Stackhouse, he has 23. He has really improved his range as a shooter. Very limited last year, but has worked on his perimeter jumper. He was the MVP in the ACC tournament last year as a freshman. He is a special player. Foul on McGinnis. That'll be his second in the eighth team foul. It's a one and one for Duke. North Carolina has the mental attitude that we're not going to lose. Duke has the attitude in recent games that we can't make the big play and win. And it's important for them psychologically to get over that hump and have themselves leave this locker room tonight with a W. Capel has hit his only two free throws tonight, has nine points. Like you know, the NCAA tournament becomes absolutely almost a, uh, an impossibility for Duke. Except in the ACC tournament, if they get hot, they capable of winning three games in a row. Who knows? Maybe Jimmy V, 1983, would have never been in a tournament had he not beat That's Michael right. Jordan in Carolina and then Ralph Sampson in Virginia. And the way they're playing North Carolina tonight, the other day, the way they Maryland. played at Maryland, they've shown they can compete. Well, they can play with anybody on a given night. Somebody look for six. Oh, oh, what a pass! Oh. Under control. I mean, that kid Stackhouse has got the whole package. He is multidimensional. He is a ptp -er, baby. And the jam gives Wallace 20. What a pass by Stackhouse. North Carolina digging in defensively, trying to trap out here. Got to get the ball away from the trap. Bad pass. Parks was open underneath. Pull up three by William. Get a timeout. Don't wait for the TV timeout. Get a T.O., baby. That's Peter Gunnar. The heels are back. They're jumping with joy at the Dean goal. Don't you dare go away. 4-16 left in a one-point game. Call your friends up. Call your friends North Carolina is on a 17-6 run. They have cut the lead to one after Duke led it 68-56. Returning the favor after Duke came back when they were down 26-9 at the start of the game. And they really created havoc with the pressure defensively. Here they are now face guarded. Want to throw the lob up front. Stackhouse trying to get back on Parks. Parks releases and gets the layup. Against Cherokee has 20. Against the full court pressure. Excellent maneuver by Duke. And that came out of a timeout called by Pete Gannett. Duke goes into his zone right now out of the timeout as well. With a little matchup, 2-3. Calabria for his first three of the night, and it ties it. Can't zone them. You cannot zone them. They got too many open shooters. Very difficult to zone this basketball team, Mike. The country's top three-point shooter had missed his first two, had not looked good, but he buried that one to Tyus at 76. Back after this. Tied at 76 with 3.46 to go. John Neighbor, have you ever seen anything like this? Never once in my life. I got to admit, I haven't been to many men's college games since I got out of school. But those seats that those students were waiting for two weeks for, they're not using them. They're on their feet the whole time. <laughs> hey, John, you're having such a great time down here. That means you're not going to take your check, right? Because you don't want any money for this. This is fun. <laughs> I'm having a ball. Call up your friends, people. We got a dandy. Seven games in a row, Duke has lost in the conference. They have not had a 10 loss season. I'm learning something. 24 and 10 and 84. North Carolina in the last six minutes on a 20 to 8 run, capped by Donna Calabria's three point. And they've done it with their defense. Their defense has been outstanding in their traps, creating a lot of them. You got to spread the floor. They've got to get the ball to Cherokee Parks. He hasn't touched it down low forever. A little screen and roll right here between Meek and Price. Reverse it, dump it in now. Dump it to Parks. He had good inside position, but they never looked inside. Shot clock at 13. Play a little two-man game. Parks and Cable, let your, let your leaders take.
Take over. Got the lob inside. Basket kicks in the foul on Wallace. Last nice play by Meek. Great catch by Meek. The senior makes the catch. You go to experience. That's four on Rasheed Wallace. There goes the pass by Campbell over the top of the defense. Wallace doesn't have good inside position. Meek gets the score. Larry Rose says count it, baby. There's another angle. There's the dump down. Wallace is beaten right now. Square your body. Kiss it on the glass. Count it. I was going to say from the one angle, I don't see how Wallace got the foul, but then you can see from the other angle, he got him with the hip. Big three-point play by the Dukins. 79-76. 11 points and 10 rebounds for a meet. Good call by Peter Goodett to get out of the zone and go man to man. They zone it at one possession if Calabria burned him. Parks is on Stackhouse, Meeks on Wallace. Wallace, Parks came over to help, but he buried it anyway. he has got that acrobatic jump shot. He's so agile, a little turnaround J on a baseline. Wallace has 22, the lead cut the one. Like it's only fitting that's going to come down to the wire like this. It's been such a great night for college hoops. Capel with a miss, but Parks kept it alive and Langdon gets it. I believe the stands will absolutely erupt in pandemonium if Duke were to win this game. If they do, I'm glad we're up here. Oh, wow. Isn't it been fun just to be here? There's a double screen. Baseline double screen. North Carolina reacted well to it. Again, Parks unable to touch the ball in about the last six minutes. Here's a diaper dandy. Wojciechowski, a freshman up on top. Picked up his dribble. Oh, nice reversal. Three-pointer by Capel. Nice rebound by Stack. See a big-time rebounder. He's got the great hands. He really attacks the basketball. So many weapons, North Carolina. Year. Yeah, he really was working inside against Wallace and made contact. What a super night for me. They ought to give him a standing ovation. His effort tonight, his enthusiasm, his energy, played with great enthusiasm. He's pleading his case to Frank Skagley. Too late. Too late. He's trying to be a lawyer. He's trying to be a lawyer. It's too late right now. Got to go to the sideline. 11 points, 10 rebounds. Tremendous night, a lot of hustle for Eric Meek. So Newton will come back out with four fouls. Listen to the hand from Meek. Yes, sir, he gets a standing ovation. It's a hug from Newton. Newton reports in. That's it, does it. Got to report in. Meek says, you know, we can't lose now. We got to maintain this. We got to win. At the line for the car. Wallace goes to the line where he is four out of five tonight. 22 points. It's Bielak's time. If you're Peter Cadet right now, you haven't been through it as much as a Dean Smith. That stomach is churning. It is absolutely clawed. His nails, he's biting his nails. Look at this 80% of the line tonight. And in a most hostile environment at that. I think they really relish coming here now. I really do. I think it's like so exciting to be able to get in the bus and go eight miles down the road and play here. Tied at 79. Calabria tries to save it but threw it off of Stackhouse. These programs have such respect for each other. And this man, you talk about a Hall of Famer with class. Oh, wait a minute. The ball's going to Carolina. Must, somebody must have reached a hand in for Duke to touch it. Oh, he threw oh, it, he off. it off of Newton. Yes, sir, he got it off Newton's knee. Heck of a play by Calabria. Calabria makes little things like that. That's what leads to getting to the victory. Tied at 79. you got to attack Newton right now, don't you? Would Wallace take advantage of his experience? I would think so. I'd go and sign it out for him. I'd go to Wallace. I would go to Wallace. I'd say, Rasheed, take me home, big fella. Take me home. Take me home, big fella. Last time Carolina led, it was 38-37. Wow, they're up 81-79. This is the best game that I've been part of all year. There has not been another game like this in terms of the excitement, the adrenaline, the electricity, the spirit. 106 to go. Wojciechowski for three. Not the shot. Horace. What a play by Wallace for Wojciechowski. He's back to fouls. What a play by Rasheed Wallace. Not the shot you wanted out of Wojciechowski. And 
Absolutely not. He's not a long-range shooter. He's got to take advantage there of getting the ball inside the parks or to one of their experienced players. Parks tries to come up with the offensive rebound, but Wallace with a great block. Excellent timing by Rashid Wallace. See, that's what young kids will do. Not the fault of a kid like Wojciechowski. He'll learn. I mean, this is how you learn. He's a freshman playing in this environment. The intensity at this level versus the high school level is night and day. Wallace for two very big shots. He's hit six of eight. And I'm talking intensity, Mike. I'm not just talking about playing hard. Certainly they play hard on a high school level. I'm talking about a situation in terms of the talent you're competing with. Look at the sweat, the perspiration. Peter Gordet. There he is, coaching his heart out. Trying to plead and beg. Wallace missed him both, but Stackhouse saved it. Carolina coming up with the loose ball. They pulled out a win against Wake Forest. Will they get another one on the road? And how many times over the years have you seen North Carolina with a missed free throw? Somebody tips it and they keep possession. They are masters at the end of the game. They're masters with all the little things that lead to yes, winning. Sir. Like Calabria's great play. All the little things. And they believe in the guy on the sideline. They believe when they look at Dean Smith that we can do it. They think back. They got so much tradition about coming back. That game we showed earlier, eight points down to 17 seconds and they win. People always say how lucky North Carolina is. Lucky is when you are so good and so prepared that things go your way all the time. That isn't luck. Not all the time. There's a saying, Mike, you use it on a motivational tour and speaking. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. If one is prepared for the opportunity, they take advantage of it. And that's been the history of Tar Heel basketball. Because the man sitting right there, Michelangelo, has been a genius through his career in getting his people to believe they can win. All right, there's 46 seconds on the game clock, 27 on the shot clock. How far down do you take it? Do you take the first good shot you have? I think you take the first good shot if it's a real good shot. But you certainly don't want to run it down to its entirety. Oh, my God. I mean, it's unbelievable, this situation. Two huge swings in this game. Remember, North Carolina started with a 26-9 lead. Duke came back, went out to their own big lead, and now North Carolina has come back to catch and pass it. Well, North Carolina right now is certainly going to use that clock. McGinnis guarded by Wojciechowski. They're in no hurry. Parks is on Wallace. With the lead now, you're not going to take just the first open shot. You're going to use time. You're going to take time off that clock. Shot clock at five. Stackhouse. Oh, what a loss. Calabria got it back and shot it. They got a foul. They got a foul here. Foul on Stackhouse. We got 15 ticks on the clock. And I wonder why Calabria takes that shot. Exactly. If Don't he need it. it back. Exactly, don't need the shot. Right here is the change of direction. There's a great block by Parks. What a finish. Miss Calabria. He does not have to shoot that ball. And there's the contact. Wow. What contact? They call the contact on Stackhouse. Put Parks on the line. Where? Where did you see that? I know we're so on Rashid Wallace. And that's his fifth. Mike, we're so high up here in the Catbird seat. I mean... I couldn't tell what happened in that sequence. Parks will go to the line. I didn't see a foul on Parks. I can tell you that, but the bottom line, he is there. Number 45, Sir Schwinger. He's hit two out of two Sir from the line. For the 20 the line, points for Cherokee down. Parks. Number if he makes the ball, it's tied. With 19 seconds left. I think Calabria didn't need to shoot that basketball. If he brings it out, yeah, Duke has to foul. Duke has to foul. Two shots. Now, Two if shots. you're Duke, if you can get some out, it's even overtime with Rashid out of the game. Got an advantage. 78% free throw shooter is Cherokee Parks. Two things you got to be careful of if you're Duke. Certainly North Carolina is going to take it right down to the, like the last three or four seconds and then hope if the miss to get an offensive rebound. 
Donald Williams, the clutch late game shooter. And you got to watch Jerry Stackhouse on the offensive board. Tied at 81. You got to watch Stackhouse with the missed shot, but you got to be careful. Donald Williams wants the ball late in the game. He's got a freshman playing on Langdon. Eight seconds. Penetration, spin it away. McGinnis. in overtime will be Wallace. Rasheed Wallace has fouled Wallace. out of the ball game. Oh my, this is incredible! We'll be back with overtime, at least the first one in a moment. Tied at 81, before we get to overtime, we want to show you the play where Rasheed Wallace was fouled out of the game. All we can see is contact by Stackhouse, 42. There's Cherokee, there's Stackhouse. Wallace is in the lane, number 30. Wallace not... is behind. The only thing he could have done it's was well before this was a yeah. little push, but yeah. it was a long time between if that happened and the whistle. That had to happen, Mike. That was probably the call, because Rasheed didn't even really, he didn't moan and groan about it that much either. And you don't have to really hit somebody hard in the back either. An official right. sees you push in the back, he calls it. Duke. Three of five overtime wins against Carolina. Jump and they'll up. jump this one again. I'll tell you, you're Duke right now and Peter Gaudet. You're thinking of 0-7. You're thinking of the double OT loss at home to Virginia. And you're saying, can it just go our way one time? The other thing you're thinking, wouldn't this be sweet? Now you got to think about Parks and Swicker. you got to think about the experience and go to Cherokee. Parks for three. Swicker with a rebound. Krzyzewski is watching this game. I'll bet the adrenaline has almost cured his back. I hope it does cure him. we got to get him back in the arena. Stackhouse lost it on the way up. The rebound to Newton. Now you got to be patient. Now you got to have poise, and you got to make sure your number one and two options shoot the ball. Who are they here? Well, certainly one is Jerry Parks. There he is at the baseline against Swicker. Donald Williams likes to make the big shot. Boy, certain players just have that ability. Scotty Thurman has it for Nolan Richardson, Michael Williams at Massachusetts, Randolph Childress down at Wake Forest. And look how he creates the contact yeah, he and draws the foul. He leads his body in really exceptionally well. He's done a great job accepting the fact that he's like a third option to stack house and ball. 60% free throw shooter, but he's hit all three tonight and has 20. The lead is three in overtime for Carolina. What a third option to have. Landry will come in for defense, and Williams will sit down. Collins is in for Duke. North Carolina's going to go to a scramble again. Scramble, you don't want to pick up that dribble. Capel picked up the dribble. He did it near the end of regulation. It's a cardinal sin against the trap. He also not only picks up the dribble, Mike, he puts his head down, and therefore he loses sight and doesn't have vision for anybody posting up. You young it, it's something you just can't do. Exactly. That's a no-no for backward people. You don't want to pick. See right here. Now he picks up his dribble. Now there's the trap. Now he looks down, and there's the strip by Calabria. Other people got to step to the wall, too, to reduce the passing lane and distance. You got to step to the basketball. Calabria hits the first. He has eight points. Hits the second. He has nine. And the lead has grown to five. Big possession here for Duke. Watch the trap now. Calabria's going to come. Here comes Calabria scrambling. You got to reverse the ball. Capel picked up his dribble again. Nearly threw it away. 
Not smooth at all against the double team. Capel goes baseline, forced up the shot. Not a good series for Jeff Capel. Not at all. Jerry Stackhouse, a smart play of bringing the ball out. Davey Odom says he's the best 94 feet player in the ACC. He's a great open court player, a transition player. You can feel the momentum slipping away from the Blue Devils. Yeah. 2.57 to go. Uncle Bo is now on his side to the guys down there in Chapel Hill. Carolina works the clock, the shot clock at 8. There's a screen up on top by Swicker. McGinnis with a double watch. Tough shot. Big time shot by McGinnis and Williams. They got to get a score here. This possession is mandatory. They get a score. And somehow you got to set some screens for parks. Collins is a good three point shooter. At least he has been in the past. Capel nearly lost it. Calabria all over. Got him to the baseline. Collins for three. Won't go McGinnis with a rebound. That really hurts in that possession. And now Carolina will milk the clock. Duke's got to go to some traps now. They got to really start pressuring the basketball. They look fatigued. Look at Cape, my hands on the knees. Yeah. What an effort these kids have exerted tonight. You talk about heartbreak hotel. A loss here would be devastating. I mean devastating. They that program. They didn't leave anything in the lunchbox tonight. Shot clock at five for Calabria. Stackhouse put it in just before the buzzer. He has 25. The lead is nine. I think you got to get a timeout, Mike. You got to think about threes, but you got to get a timeout. No, he knocks it down. Finally, Parks gets one and they get the timeout. Parks hits the three. He has 25. The lead cut to six, but there's only 124 to go in overtime. And right now, Carolina is in command. Time in Durham, North Carolina, 124 to go, 9084 North Carolina. A lot of individual stars tonight. Some people have really stepped up big. Let's take a look at some of the individual scoring. Wallace, who's fouled out at Stackhouse, have 25. Parks has 25. Langdon has come through with 14 for Duke. And right now, the Blue Devils have to play some defense. Well, the difference here in the overtime has been decision-making. Really making solid decisions with each possession. North Carolina has excelled in that area. Getting high percentage shots. Duke has really struggled. Duke gets an F. They really do. The decisions they've made. Yeah, the they get an F for Duke. Last couple of trips, I, without a doubt. Hey, we're going to play right now. Dr. Patrick. <laughs> professor Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I'm your professor. The prof. Stackhouse double team. See how they spread the court and try to eliminate the double up. Get some good spacing. McGinnis gets it to Williams. Only 114 to go in the game. Got to think about fouling. You can't just play around here. Let him take so much time down. You got to think about fouling. Trade three for two. You got to go after him. Can't 16 him. seconds on the shot clock. One minute. One minute. I don't understand. Let him just kill all his time, Mike. Somebody I don't need him. But you can't foul down. now. It's down to six. Not now. Williams for three. Oh. Landry with a rebound. A, get a new shot clock. Now you've got a foul. you got to go after the ball. you got to go after the ball. It's spreading the floor. Duke wasting a lot of times, and you make Cherokee Parks come out and commit his fourth. 16 and one. You don't have depth. We talk about it, but they're 16 and one, North Carolina. Chance to be 17 and one. One loss over Wolfpack Country. Played without one of their starters. Dean Smith using his offensive defensive substitutions. Swicker comes in. Williams goes out. Landry goes to the line. North Carolina with a win tonight with Ty Maryland at 7-1. Maryland's only loss was to North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And Gary Williams keeps running back and forth to the kitchen. He keeps looking at the score. He says, come on, Dukies, help us out a little. Gary has a great basketball team up there and a great player in Joe Smith and a lot of other guys who really play this game. Yeah, they really do. They're not just a one-man team. No, they sir, they're very good. athletic. They play together. Simpkins and Booth and Rhodes and that whole gang. 92-84, Duke needs threes, and Capel can't afford to take his time. Screen and step back, Parks, and shoot it. Price, he was on the line, it's a two. 
three points. And they call timeout with 29 seconds to go. You know, years ago, several years ago, you call the timeout because you want to stop the clock. The clock stops in the last minute of the game. The people say, well, why the timeout? The timeout is to be able to set up the defense, to go into a defensive alignment. Dick, I really think it was a mistake for Duke to let that almost the entire 35-second shot clock I agree run off on that last possession. Oh, without a doubt. No doubt about that. That was just poor judgment there. Also poor judgment offensively early in the overtime where North Carolina had exceptional judgment with the play by Donald Williams, the play by Calabria into the stack house. Of course, this is something you might expect out of a team like North Carolina and a young team like Duke making those kind of decisions. Exactly. But think about Heartbreak Hotel. They lose tonight, Mike. They're 0-8. Think a double overtime loss to Virginia. Overtime loss possibly here. Two-pointer to Maryland. I mean, it's unbelievable. And they get to play Wake on Saturday. Next Saturday, Florida State against number five, Maryland. The Seminoles are playing better, and Bob Sura has been sensational. And then number 14, Wake Forest against the Blue Devils. That's a 4 o'clock start. Tim Duncan leads the ACC in rebounds, field goal percentage, and blocks. Where did Tim Duncan come from? He's only 18 years old from out of St. Croix. They found him out there. You love those recruiting trips, don't oh, you? Oh, wow. Duke has got to go for the foul, and they do. Capel immediately with 28 seconds to go. you got to really reach out to the Carolina kids. I mean, they could have folded here late in this game, but that's not part of their game. And there's a look at Peter Gaudet and his staff, Michael Bray, Tommy Amaker. I told Tommy Amaker before the game, I said, you guys just got to hang in there. Everybody knows you know what you're doing. Exactly. I mean, all three guys have a solid basketball background. This guy has a solid background, too. Calabria gets the first. He's three for three from the line. Dante with ten points. I don't know about fatigue, Mike, but I'm fatigued right now. I haven't played. I'm drenched. I'm so. I'm up here in the catbird seat, and these kids must be so exhausted. Williams comes back in 93-86. It is a three-possession game, and look at Carolina on the line with a free throw. That's an unbelievable night here tonight. Capel, but it's not screen. Kick it back out to the screener. The three hits for Langdon. Only 16 seconds to go. Trajan has 17 points tonight. And the foul on Price. Some of the young kids in Duke don't really have talent. You think of Ricky Price and Langdon. They're going to be really solid players ultimately. The bottom line is, though, they lose guys like Parks and Meeks. Meek, and that's not going to be easy to replace. I thought you made a great point earlier. As hard and as well as Cherokee Parks has played all year, you have to feel for him that he's not getting the support around him. He's so used to winning, so acclimated to getting into the winner's circle. And all the success they've had here at Duke. Five points for McGinnis, his first free throw. Big assist night for Jeff McGinnis. He has 10 coming off a career-high 13 against Florida State. You know, you mentioned Cherokee Parks. I know his stock has gone up, up, and up with a lot of NBA people to where it was in the past. This crowd deserves a hand, too, Mike. They were unbelievable here today. This came down the lane. Basket counts and the foul. Mistake by Landry yeah, to step you, in. You don't want that foul right there. Now if you're Duke, you got to get into a real tough defensive alignment and try to force a turnover like Carolina did. There's the foul. Carolina against Wake Forest. They forced the turnover on the inbounds of the basketball. It's exactly the same situation we have. If Cable can make the free throw, it cuts it to three. Five second turnover. And then you sell out on the inbounds play. Absolutely. You lock up on every guy on the floor. Capel with 13 points, four out of four from the strike. Five out of five. Now they have to get the steal. You gotta lock up. You got a face guard. Oh, they did a great job there. Post they foul Swicker with four seconds to go. Remember, three-point shot. If he can miss the free throws, they get a shot and look at the goal. And Serge is one of the guys you'd look to foul. A 61% free throw shooter. Who doesn't play off it as an in a pressure situation like this? I think this crowd needs to be applauded and saluted. Their effort tonight, the crowd, has been fantastic. Let's salute the Dukies. Let's salute these kids. Couldn't agree with you more. It is a two-shot foul 
Swicker, who has seven rebounds tonight, has not scored. If he makes either one, one it's, it's over. over. He makes one, it's history. But if he doesn't, we got a shot for a, another OT. And I want another OT. I would not. I want another OT. about it with only four seconds left if you miss the free throw i mean all you can do is take it and throw it down court right well basically remember this night the clock doesn't start people until the ball touches the hand of a player i think the timeout now i, I think the timeout now starts in a situation where they get a chance right now duke to set up a shot the clock does not well, no, start get the one free throw left oh yeah stood up free right oh yeah so if he misses, all oh, you can do is toss it. Oh, yeah. Oh, if he misses the free throw. You got to grab the ball. Exactly. You're talking about the miss. I thought you meant the me. I'm no. sorry. The heat has got to be. The heat has got to be. I no, if he makes it, it doesn't it's matter what doesn't they do. Matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Boy, this, this is going to be a heartbreaker, especially for Duke, if they lose this one. The way they have played tonight, being 0-7 in the conference and all the other things oh. that have gone around this team. But what a win it would be for Carolina. Incredible. The fact that they go with two in a row, on a row. So the scenario again right here. Mike is active. Number one, if he makes the free throw, it's academic because there's no way that Duke can win. You'd have to come up with a genius play of somehow, a dumb play of following a three-point shooter. And this would be a miss. Fourth. The clock starts going, and it could be very, very difficult to get a good look. This would be the fourth straight win for Carolina in the series, the fourth straight loss for Duke at home. Number 15, Jamal Williams is back in for the party. Haven't said that in a decade. Oh, that's incredible. So Zwicker goes back to the line. See what Duke is doing and putting two guys on the wings. If I'm North Carolina, I match up with those two guys and I'll give them a good look. The Parks grabs this rebound. See North Carolina, you got to match up on the wings. You don't want the ball to be thrown over the top. Collins capable. There's a miss. Missed right? it. You got the look. They got a chance. He lets it fly.
my problems. I thought that Dean Smith made a great decision in his alignment with his players. They weren't able to throw the ball over the top. Kept the ball in front of him. He just makes a dramatic shot. This is for Coach K. They said, Coach K. They want this one for Coach K, baby. It has never been louder in here, ever. I just want a great game. Whoever wins, that's what to it. But what a just great moment to be here. The second overtime, McGinnis takes a deep breath and brings it up against Cable. And we take a deep breath. We're out of air up here. Oh. Stackhouse against Price. Nice defense by Price. Good Ricky game. Price may be that forward, that wing guy that they've needed so badly. I'd play him 35 minutes a night night. Sink or swim with him. Let him get experience. Parks double team knocked out of bounds by McGinnis. Important right now for Duke to establish good tempo early in the overtime. North Carolina took charge in that first overtime. And I still don't believe how Duke got back. There's no way. There was no way a couple of different times tonight. The magic of the three-point shot. You can't survive without it. Cable with a runner. A one go. Having a big night rebound and it came up empty on his two free throws. Tough situation for a kid that doesn't have a lot of minutes. Oh, he's playing very well. Here's the drive by McGinnis. He's fouled. I respect anybody that plays for him. You lace them up. The first uh, commandment of competition people. is thou shalt play hard. Ball. And Serge Swicker could never be accused of not giving a supreme effort. You're right. That's five on Jeff Capel. He will get a standing ovation when he leaves. The man who sent it in a double overtime. 17 points, five assists, and the shot of his life. The good news for Duke about this, they've got a lot of guards who can play. Yeah, they do. They're bowing down. Everybody's bowing down, Jules. All the media giants that arrived here tonight certainly are being thrilled. They're from all over. The Daily News, Chicago Tribune, Basketball Times, Newsweek. Well, if any of them didn't like this one, they don't like basketball. College basketball. Tonight you show this. If people can't see, this is the most exciting sporting event of the ball. College hoops. I mean, there's absolutely nothing more exciting in terms of the pageantry, the enthusiasm, the spirit, the cheerleaders, the fans. McGinnis has six. Carolina leads by one. Missed the second free throw. Right, right, right now, if you do, use some time, make some passes. Try to make them have to exert themselves defensively. They're in a man-to-man, -man, a one-two-two -two set. I Again, that's the last time they got it to Cherokee Parks down low. Newton with a fallaway jump. Cherokee's got to really assert himself, stepping up to the basketball and wanting the ball late in the game. And if you're right now North Carolina, you got to think about maybe getting a shot for Calabria. He hasn't had a shot for a three. Lay a screen on Price. This is McGinnis working against Wojciechowski. Off balance jumper won't go. Kept alive. Calabria had it and saves it. I'll tell you what, the Dante Calabria is one tough competitor. He's an excellent rebounder and he's very smart. You're talking about a 6 4 player playing the wing. Really a bar. 2.57 to go in the game. North Carolina by one over Duke in the second over.
four to go in the game as Duke falls behind the way they did in the first overtime. And North Carolina wants a timeout to talk about. We've got a timeout. Under two minutes to go in the second half.